Welcome everybody to the next episode of the Cannabis Review. I am delighted to be joined on this episode. The founder of Puff and Stuff based on Cork is Jim Weathers. Jim, how are you keeping today? Not too bad, thank you. And I really appreciate you having me on. Delighted to have you on. Major big news at the moment over here in Little Old Ireland. So yourself and JP are causing a right old ruckus. Can you maybe give everybody an overview, maybe not the start of the story of Puff and Stuff, but from the initial first uh uh, legal processes that you guys went through when that started and what instigated that process so we can yeah. get everybody as much information in the 15 minutes yep yep um so basically in 2000 in may in 2019 we were raided um and so that's that was basically a week before jp was raided so we were raided on a saturday and then he was raided the, the following uh, friday um, the difference really, though, between our cases is um, even though it's pertaining to the same products, JP's started from um, being rated by by customs because of importing a product where we were rated because an individual bought a product from us, was walking down the street and then was stopped and searched by the guards. And then um, when he told them that he bought that at us from our shop. They came in um, the following day and asked for samples, which we gave with no problem and, and showed them the lab reports confirming what the content of THC was. Um, they were kind of um, oblivious to um, the difference between cannabis and hemp. Um, so about seven months after that, um, we got raided and uh, they came in and seized all the products from us. And then, um, then left. And then, about three months after that, then they came in and, and, and arrested me. Um, and then, seven months after that, then they arrested my wife. So right now, both my wife and I are are being charged with uh, sale and distribution of uh, of cannabis. Okay, so all of the proceedings that we've been seeing over the last week or two have stemmed from those initial first processes. Yeah. So what happened was, so we were raided in May, and then in January of 2020, uh, JP and us both filed um, judicial reviews to have our cases thrown out because of what the um, basically they're you know is unconstitutional what they're doing. Um, it's against EU. Um, you know, we're following within EU laws. So um, we filed a judicial review exactly the same week. And at that time, the judicial review board um, put our two cases together. So for the past year, just over a year, um, our cases have been running in conjunction with each other. Since then, there's been numerous other cases um, coming about. So basically, from my understanding, that they're just um, uh, they're going through the process as well. But the two biggest high profile cases would be JP and uh, or Little Collins and then Pup and stuff. Now, Little Collins has been a lot more vocal than I have been um, during the first four months of, of our encounter with the guards and being raided and arrested. You know, I was publicly out on, you know, in the newspapers on nearly every radio station. Um, but then I was advised by my solicitor that I needed to stop. Um, it was really pissing them off um, that I was out there um, making a wave for them. So I stopped and then um, JP just continued on. So since then, we kind of have been just in the shadows. Um, a lot of people have completely forgot that we've been, um, that we're actually involved in this. And then it's just been re recently over the past couple of weeks um, where I've been starting to get a bit more public about it. Um, and then JP has been tagging us to um, to in include us in, in, in the case because actually that case, like I said, even though we've got two separate cases, they're actually being, they're exactly the same case within the, the high court. Okay, perfect. So you guys are two separate cases. The judicial review put the two of them together so they could review them both separately. Do you have two separate law entities sep uh representing both of you guys or is there one individual firm now that represents you both no. so we have different um you know different teams um but they are working together um in a sense so basically whatever we file jp files whatever jp files we file the exact same thing so at this point in time um everything is done you know we filed the last papers uh friday actually i signed the last um affidavits um, so we went to court on Tuesday. It got adjourned again until the 22nd of February. What's going to happen on that date, I'm not quite sure. Um, but from what we're hearing, that the actual hearing date to finalize this is going to be the 14th and 15th of July is going to be the, um, the deciding factor, whether they're going to drop the charges or the, uh, the uh, judicial review will allow the uh, prosecution to continue. Um, their case against us. 
Okay, so let's play devil's advocate. Let's say the charges get dropped. It's now open season. For the consumer watching this and for people watching this, what does that now allow have happen in the Irish industry? It's obviously not going to regulate any sort of THC products. Would it just move it in line with the 0.03% level of THC? Uh, and the well, the point, it, 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 it would put it in line with 0.2, but so... so um yeah sorry uh, i lost my train of thought there so france so the exact same case is going on in france right so the france has finally changed their their drug laws to allow 0.3 percent uh, thc in um, products whether if it's cbd or food products so 0.3 is allowed so that we would suspect that ireland is going to follow suit it's going to definitely open the market you know if, if we win the judicial review the cbd market in this country is going to probably explode but i don't think it's going to be something that's going to happen instantaneously because they're going to have to change the misuse of drug law, which is, is going to happen. As long as we win the judicial review, that will happen. It will allow the 0.3% or 0.2%. Now, there has been um, rumors. I say rumors. I've actually got a letter from a, a TD, not a TD, sorry, from a minister about three years ago confirming that they are going to change the Misuse of Drug Act to allow 0.3% THC. But the only thing it stated was that would be in the future. Well, it's been three years and that still hasn't happened. And here we are. We have about six cases going through the judicial system, costing the state tons of money for something that they have already admitted that they're going to change at some point in time. Yeah, well, if we've learned one thing throughout this process, anybody who didn't know anything about politics now knows the policymakers are not the quickest of animals in the world. And you don't want to have patience and thick skin to be dealing with them. Yep. So, but I mean, so the market's not going to open up, you know, you would really hope that that would happen, but because of the drug laws are not going to be changed and it, it could take, you know, well, France actually did it fairly quickly. So it's just a matter of how quick the Irish government is willing to make that change. And then at that point, um, you know, the market's going to open, but then you're going to have the contingency of whether or not they're going to make the flower still illegal, which France kind of did. Um, so France's stance was the exact as Ireland. So now they've allowed the 0.3% THC. They have allowed extraction from the flower to produce CBD, but they've out, they have banned the sale of flowers to consumers. So um, it would appear that Ireland would take the same stance, but France is actually being taken to court now um, to clarify that the flower can be sold to consumers um, because it's a huge market. I mean, it is, it, it will just be a, um, a very good you know, outcome. Yeah, well, we talked to Benjamin Alexandre Jean Waffre, who's the CEO of Augur Associates in Paris there last week, and I posed the same question, is this the end of the CBD flower sales now? So he seems to believe the cat's out of the bag now. Um, it, 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 it's going kind to of find it very hard to put it back into the, into the bag and get rid of the whole industry. Otherwise, you end up turning into a black market industry. Well, that's yeah. That that could possibly happen. So here's this. The you know, it's all contingent on a risk assessment. So what the European Court of Justice said when they ruled on the cannabis case or overturned the cannabis case in France, basically was that if a member state was going to completely ban THC uh, in entirety, um, that they were not going to allow any percentages. That they would have to do a risk assessment to prove that the product that is being sold um, is a risk to um, to consumers and fortunately for us um and and france that there is no such um study done now there is studies to confirm that there is no health risk at all so we definitely have that in our favor but it appears that france has come up with something um, i've heard i don't know exactly what it is but they've come up with something to say that it is a, a health risk and that that's what they're grasping at those straws to try and keep it that way um, so I have a feeling that that could end up going back into the uh, European Court of Justice to have them to find, make a final decision on that. Okay, on a little lighter note now, you be a man to answer this question. So where is the best CBD flower being produced in the world at the moment? Are the North Americans catching up, although they've been THC heavy, or have the Europeans had maybe a little bit of a head start when it comes to this territory where they've kind of had to deal with this first? Well, that's an interesting question. Uh, so if you look at the markets um, and you kind of got to split it into threes, right? And, and what I mean by that is the United States, we'll say North America, so the United States and Canada, um, Europe, and then, and then Switzerland on its own. 
So with the United States and Switzerland, the allowed THC amount in a CBD product is point or sorry, is 1%. 1%. Yeah. So, um, so you cannot include Switzerland in this. Um, now what I've known in the past with Switzerland, uh, you know, going back almost four years ago, um, what they do is they wash their products. Um, and that is to drop the cannabinoid profile of percentages. And then they test it again. And if it's not, a, if it's still above the 0.2% to be sold within the European market, then they wash it again and wash it and wash it until they get it below it. Um, so when you go to Switzerland, you can, you know, I think every single petrol station, you can go buy CBD flour, um, but it is 1%. Um, so, um, so to answer your question, I think that Europe has, um, I think, really progressed with the lower percentage of THC products. So you can't really compare Switzerland or the United States within the European market because of the major difference in... in um, Is there a quality difference in flour regardless of the THC content? Is there a drastic difference, let's say, in terpene I, levels or in... in... I, I, think, I think for for quality as far as appearance looks, uh, it is definitely going to be... Um, the lower the THC content, um, the, the bushier cut is going to look like. It's going to kind of look like bushweed, um, you know. So then, as that um, starts going um, uh, with higher THC, so getting around the 0 0.2, 0 0.3, the flower of the plant is going to look much nicer, you know. But a lot of that's can you know controlled by also the you know the grower and how they're producing it, uh, or sorry, how they're processing it from you know the drying to the curing. A lot of these people are now using machines. Um, to to dry their product, which is causing it to be browner rather than a green. So there is this a distinctive difference now that you can look between CBD and and, and cannabis. Um, cannabis is a, more of a you know the, the greener color where where hemp now is tending to be um, the brownish. I think that they're kind of rushing uh, their process. That's just you know my opinion. Um, to the, I mean I'm sure that every single CBD producer out there are you know growing flowers can't keep up with the, with the demand. Um, yeah. so. You know, they, they need to do whatever they can to try and get it to market and, and expediting the, the, the process of drying it and curing, um, I think, is uh, affecting the quality of it somewhat. Well, that's it. The sooner it's regulated and we get proper seal of approval on specific products that we're able to buy as a consumer, I think, the better for everybody. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. Well, we're up to our time now. Thanks very much for uh, coming on the show, GM. If everybody wants to check out Puff and Stuff, there's the website below. I'd highly recommend going and checking them out. Uh, they're a raw, authentic supplier for Europe, and they have a great selection of stuff. So the best of luck with everything over the next few weeks, Jim. Hopefully, we're going to get to touch base with you uh, just after the case, and we've got champagne pop popping. Well, hopefully, hopefully, on the on the, the 15th, the evening of the 15th of July, I hope there will be some, uh, some fireworks and, and major celebrations going on, because this is going to be a landmark. Um, you know, it's just the first stages of... of um, of the legalization legalization of, of cannabis you know so it's in the diary there now i will be back to you before and <laughs> best of luck thank you very much for coming on the show it's very much appreciated for giving me your time and yeah. Uh, yeah hope you have a great rest of your evening you too thanks thanks everybody for watching and we'll check you in the next episode Cheers.